To the world, she's known simply as Octo Mum. And if you've heard of her, it was probably all bad. Nadia Suleiman is the single mother who made international headlines with the birth of eight babies through IVF last year. Problem was, she already had six children. And the only way she's been able to support her extraordinary brood is to repeatedly sell her story in a love-hate courtship with the media. The result? She's been called everything from completely mad to a money-grabbing monster. So I was surprised when I finally got to meet Nadia. Eccentric? Certainly. A loving mum? Definitely. The rest of it, well, you be the judge. They are usually starving by this time because they eat breakfast at six. It's lunchtime at Nadia Suleiman's house. <laughs> and it's hardly fine dining. <laughs> Do they have a favourite food, Nadia? Everything that's edible. <laughs> but there's little choice when there are eight hungry toddlers to feed. This is Noah, this is Malia, this is Josiah. He does not like anybody. <laughs> this is Naraya. This is Jonah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Makai. Welcome to the chaotic, crazy life of the single mother the world knows as Octo. I know you don't think the word crazy means anything, but no. do you think you are different? I think my choices in life have definitely been out of the ordinary, that have been not in the box. I guess I don't fit the mold of anybody. Nadia, can we get a smile? Since giving birth to octuplets, Nadia Suleiman has become a tabloid sensation. Hi, Nadia. I'm a fan. Don't worry, I'm not trying to follow you. She's been labelled mad and a publicity seeker and worse, an irresponsible mother. But that's not just because this 35-year-old single woman had eight children. It's also because she already had six other children. I really wanted a family. I never wanted fame. That's the thing. I wanted to be private and have my family. You've become a public possession. That's how it feels. Yeah, that it feels like this isn't my life anymore. Oh, hi, Nadia. How you doing? Not good. <laughs> it was January 26th last year when Nadia Suleiman's life changed forever. Quiet, quiet, quiet. What was to later become a highly controversial IVF procedure resulted in this extraordinary event. In the operating theater, everyone, including the doctors, were expecting seven babies. But suddenly, there were eight. Not even Nadia Suleiman had expected this pregnancy would produce so many children. But as the mother of now 14 children lay there, the numbers barely registered. I really was refraining from reflecting on what was to come. So in my head, I'm making other plans, have the babies, um, go back to school, you know, part-time, you know, I'm making all these crazy plans. Where were you, Nadia? In my own little Nadia land. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might have been. <laughs> yeah, I think I was. Nadia, can we get a smile? There you go. Thanks. While Nadia was planning a quiet life in the suburbs, the world's media had arrived and everyone had an opinion. She's so selfish. She just wanted to increase her brood. It's a horrific shedding of her parental responsibility. Now they're here. And the question is, who has the long range as well as the short range plan for these babies? What exactly is the long range plan? Los Angeles high-profile lawyer Gloria Allred is particularly critical. She supported legal action to have money Nadia made selling her story held in a trust for the children. Traditionally, parents are supposed to be supporting their children. Yeah. I, I don't know what her motive was. I, I really am not even concerned about what her motives are. But the question is, what happens now? They're here. It's not an academic issue. It's a real-life challenge. There are 14 real-life challenges and lives on the line. Do you think they're on the line? I think they are. I don't think I'm anything different than any other mom 
who's doing what they need to do to survive and take care of her kids. It must have been shocking, though, to find that everybody had an opinion about you. Well, that's human nature. Everyone has to have an opinion. But were I you go, prepared for that? Um, not to that degree. You know, I, I never thought people would start making up lies. And then they start to bring up very unrealistic, you know, superficial things and about comparing me to some actor that I had to really think about placing the name to the face. Angelina I, Jolie. Right. And I'm like, I never follow celebrities. I will only watch well, kids' movies, right? So I'm like thinking, are you kidding me? One of the most peaceful times for me is when I'm awake in the middle of the night and all the kids are sleeping. I usually just like to go look at them. But as the world watched from the outside, oh inside, God. Nadia's surreal God. life was becoming all too real. Sleep was rare and a luxury. Can I eat you up? Say no. You're crazy, mommy. And so too was money. A thousand dollars barely covers the weekly food bill. One, two, three. One, two, three, two. I'm losing count. Or the 80 nappies needed every day. And to help care for 14 children, Nadia needs three full-time nannies at $10,000 a month. Her parental dream is now no fairy tale. And to pay for it, she's had to do a deal with the devil, the media that loves to hate me. Congratulations, Octavon, you did it. You're a genius. The media turned her into a villain and she turned that into a prophet. That's crazy. That's crazy like a fox. This woman may make a mint on the backs of the lives she birthed. Nadia has done a number of deals. Ah. Oh, no! From a fly okay. on the wall <laughs> documentary. Say sorry. Say sorry. To a bikini shot showing her amazing transformation. In the very beginning, people are like, oh, she's loving that attention. When you look at her, she's smiling. You know what? That, that insane grin I have on my face, that's anxiety. <laughs> that's nervousness. Get away from me, people. Yeah, that's just, you know, what do I do? I'm desperately caught and torn between trying to protect them, their well-being, their future, and their sense of identity and self while trying to survive. Because I desperately do, I still desperately do not want to rob them of their childhood. I don't get it. Is this attention for attention? Oh, oh, son of a... Got my nose. Oh, okay. no! He cut my nose. Oh, that hurt. With a screwdriver. You threw it at my face! You don't do that! It the is a fine line to walk, and one which store. some of Nadia's children seem unhappy about. You, oh, my goodness. Elijah! You're now grounded from the- keep talking about me, I'm gonna keep I'm talking not, stuff to you. I'm not talking about you at all. And I won't be talking to you tonight I'm if you continue this. No, you can't have a screwdriver! Ow! Elijah, you- Can you responsibly life. take care of so many children? Can you give them the things they need? Nobody can. Two couples together couldn't possibly give all of these kids the, the emotional, I've said this so many times, psychological, emotional, physical needs they need, everything they need. But there's only one of you. How much oh, well, time I, can you spend with an individual child? You do what you can. I'm doing everything I can. Oh my goodness. I grounded him for a week. <sighs> Nadia Suleiman grew up an only child and she craved being a part of a big family. Isaiah, Isaiah. Wow, three. Yeah. I wanted to try to create my own little village or my own little society, which was safe, you know, and predictable. And, and you know, connections always felt safer with children than, let's say, with a potential mate or significant other. And I want to do this and this and this and this and be Snow White at Disneyland. <laughs> I wanted to do all these things. I had very high aspirations, but, um, yeah, I wanted to always be a, a mom, always. And, and then the significant other kind of was in the back burner. You certainly became a mom. I know. <laughs> Nadia's motherhood dream was realized via IVF and an unidentified friend prepared to donate sperm. He is the father of all her children and according to Nadia was prepared to be a part of their lives until she decided to implant more embryos. Were you hoping that he would hang around or he might be interested? I was, yeah, I have to be honest. Um, before this happened, I, 
it was to the point where he wanted to know and be in the lives of the six kids. And that's the conversation we had prior and, to this. And, and I now, felt incredible guilt. I still feel guilty though, because I know that everything would be different. He could possibly be in the six lives, in their lives. Um, those children could have known their father. The six, if I hadn't made the decision I made. Mm -hmm. When you had six children, okay, you clearly made a decision, mm -hmm. one more? I clearly made the decision after they were sending me bills. You have frozen embryos, you have so many frozen embryos in storage, and it was piling up, and what am I gonna do with all the embryos? And I'm not gonna keep paying hundreds and hundreds every couple of months, what why, am I gonna why, do? Why was it not possible for you to let those embryos go? In retrospect, um, I may have made different choices if I knew then what I know now. But back then, that is my that was my nature. Oh, well, those are my children. They're just as important, you know. They're they're still you saw embryos, them as, lives. Mm -hmm. You saw lives. them as children. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you just couldn't let couldn't any of them go. No, I couldn't let them. American IVF guidelines say women under the age of 35 should only be implanted with two embryos. Nadia's doctor, Michael Kamraba, is now under investigation. Did he do the wrong thing? I did the system know. fail you? I don't know. I'm, I'm not a victim. And again, it was my choice. I did everything on my own volition. But, if, he, but if he followed the guidelines that he was supposed to, you would not have 14 children. Probably not. Why, why do you think he did it then? Probably um, because I just wanted not to ever do it again. I wanted to get it over with. In all my mind, I've done this twice before, after the twins. I began rationalizing my way around it. You know, I didn't think it would work. I really didn't. I really, really didn't think I thought the pregnancy test would be negative. At the most, one would grow. <laughs> Dr. Kamraba, a 30-year veteran of IVF procedures, argues he's been totally ethical and professional in his work. It was done the right way. I'm not defending. I'm saying there are certain situations that uh, need certain attention in each case. Goodbye, baby, on the tree Nadia Suleiman is unique, but no matter your view, it's hard to argue she wants only the best for her children. For years to come, she'll be faced with some difficult decisions if she's to provide adequately for her family. A family that, wait for it, could continue to grow. Mm. I note um, that you haven't absolutely ruled out one more child. No, life isn't, isn't an absolute. I don't believe, you know, we, it is set in stone. I will not have another on my own. But who knows in several years from now, if that quarter of a percent out of a hundred, you know, extraordinary person I meet, you never know. I'm not thinking of that now. Today I say, no, absolutely not. In five years, ask me the same question. Maybe my life will be different. President Donald J. Trump. I'm desperate to get you. America. He's a bulldog for us. He wants to rule the world. I only want to be a dictator for one day. Donald Trump is our superhero president. What was better under Trump? Everything. He made it better for everybody. Sunday on 60 Minutes. You can't make a mistake on this. Why is it so important for Republicans to have an alternative? Because he's a criminal. The radical left Democrats want to take away my freedom. This is a man who's facing 91 criminal charges. That's a bunch of baloney. Donald Trump behind bars would sell U.S. intelligence for a bag of tuna or a book of stamps.